the new PSAT and SAT is almost guaranteed to have a question, at least one like this, where they're going to give you a linear equation, aka a line, and ask you about what it means, what one of the values means, what does in this case the three mean. So if you have a really good handle of what these numbers mean in a real sense, in a real scenario, you'll be able to tackle this question no problem. So let's walk through what's going on in this equation, and hopefully it'll help you apply to other questions like this. The equation above is used to model the relationship between the number of cups N of hot chocolate sold per day in a coffee shop and the average daily temperature T in degrees Fahrenheit. According to the model, what is the meaning of the three in the equation? First thing I want to do is rearrange this to get this looking closer to a different form. So I'm just going to make this N equals negative 3T plus 456. And the reason why I wanted to do that is I want this to look like Y equals MX plus so think about, for a second, what each of these values represents in the y equals mx plus b form, and then what it would represent in this real-life scenario. We'll start with the b. The b is known as the y-intercept, and graphically speaking, if I were to graph this function, it would be where the line hits the y-axis. So in this case, it would hit at the point 0, 456. It hits at 456. Uh, in this case, notice the line is sloping downwards because it's a negative slope. We'll talk more about that in a second. And so the maximum value essentially is 456, and the value of whatever this y value represents decreases as we move along. So notice in this case, we're not asked what the 456 means, but the 456 is kind of the, the maximum value of whatever the y is in this case. And the y is the is n it's the number of hot chocolate sold so really it's like the number of maximum cups of coffee sold in this scenario uh, assuming t can't be smaller than zero but um, i guess t could be smaller than zero but in any event like when t is zero here's the easier way to understand when t is zero when the temperature is zero degrees they sell 456 cups right so this b value basically just tells you when you're at zero for whatever your x value is here in this case t value what is the value of n? And it's 456. So it's kind of the, what I would call like the starting point, the base point uh, on which everything else is based in these kind of real life examples. Now, what about the negative 3t? And this is, of course, where the question is getting to. So this m and this negative 3 are the same. So the negative 3 is the slope. And let's break that down. So m is equal to negative 3. But I'm going to just write this as negative 3 over 1. Because remember, you can put anything over 1 here. Now, what does this mean? This is typically the change in y over the change in x. But in this case, we don't have y and x. We've got different letters. So what is the y? The y in this case is n, and the x is t. So this is the same thing as the change in n over the change in t. So let's really break this down. What is this saying? It is saying that for every change in n of 3, you have a change in t of 1. In other words, for every change in t of 1, you're going to have a change in n of 3. So this is a ratio of the change in the number of cups of hot chocolate sold and the number of degrees, uh, and the change in the number of degrees it is outside. So what does the 3 represent here? Well, let's go to the choices and see which one might make sense. For every increase of 3 degrees Fahrenheit, one more cup of hot chocolate will be sold. That has it flipped because, again, for every change of 1 degree, right, delta T of 1, you have a decrease of 3 cups sold, right, negative 3. All right, so let's write that down. So for every increase in T of 1 in T, you have a decrease of 3 in n. In other words, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. As the temperature goes up 1 degree, you're going to sell 3 fewer cups of hot chocolate, which would make sense because the hotter it gets, fewer people want to eat hot chocolate. But anyway, so that doesn't make sense. For every decrease of 3 degrees Fahrenheit, one more cup of hot chocolate will be sold. That's got it flipped. That would be if it's 1 third or negative 1 third. How about C? For every increase of one degree Fahrenheit, three more cups of hot chocolate will be sold. That's the opposite, right? If we increase the temperature by one, we are decreasing the number of hot chocolates sold by three. 
How about D? For every decrease of one, three more cups of hot chocolate will be sold. Notice that's the opposite of this case. If I have negative three over one, that's the same thing as writing three over negative one. They're identical. So notice if I decrease the temperature by one, I increase the number of cups of chocolate, hot chocolate sold by three. And again, that makes sense. The, the colder the temperature gets, the more hot chocolate you're going to sell. So of the choices, D is the answer. So whenever you have one of these linear equations, the first thing you might want to do is write out the slope, write out a little picture of your y-intercept to get an idea of what these might represent in real terms. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com slash enroll. And you can find the link in the description below the video.